Article 8. The motion reads, move that the town will vote to accept the provisions of Mass General Law Chapter 44, Section 53 F and a half to establish an enterprise fund for the Hadlib Public Access Television Department to provide public, educational, and governmental television programming and services and further vote to transfer $135,604 from the cable access receipts account to said fund effective July, 2000, July 1st, 2016. Do I have a motion? I have a second. Selectman Pipshinsky. If there's any questions. Absolutely. Each selectman have different responsibilities. I'm the liaison to Hadley Public Access Television. That's why I'm speaking to this. Normally this would just be in the omnibus budget and it would be a routine budget and we'd vote on it, but it's changed. Uh, rules and regulations in the federal government and the communications have changed to the point where uh, we had to make some major decisions where the money was. Uh, in 208, the town signed a contract and with charter. In that contract, they were obligated to pay the town 75000 at the initial contract. We're eight years into that contract. In two years, we'll be receiving another 75000 Yearly, with the subscribers, we receive approximately sixty to $65,000. All of this money was in HPAC's uh, budget, and the new rules say we have to put it into an enterprise fund. What we did initially was set aside $10,000 for like a reserve fund, just like the Finance Committee has for emergencies. After examining it further, we realized the cost of the equipment is exorbitant. If uh, the television access people lose a server, it could be as much as $12,000 alone. So what we did was increase that to 20,000. So he has a reserve, so he doesn't have to wait a year to get the equipment, come back to town meeting and vote on it. Uh, so basically it's only a one-time article and then everything's gonna go back into the reg regular budget process, but it's unique because of the new rules that are imposed by federal communications. Thank you, Selectman Pichinski. Any questions? Yeah, I have one. Is there any public taxpayer money going to this? Is this all coming from Cable 5? It comes from the cable company and from the subscribers ship. No tax money at all. None. Thank you. Any other questions? All in favor, please signify with your gray card. Any opposed? One opposed? Any abstentions? Article passes 402 to 1. Article 9, Omnibus Budget. Please bear with me, this motion is a little bit lengthy. Move that the town raise and appropriate the sum of $14,279,101 and appropriate from sewer receipts $1,012,893 and to appropriate from water receipts $1,234,293 and to transfer from sewer reserves 10,000, to transfer from water reserves 10,000 and to take from MSBA debt fund reserves $2,444 and appropriate from the Hadley Public Cable Access Franchise Receipts $87,954 and to transfer from the November 2014 premium balance 928 
for the maintenance and operation of the town in the fiscal year 2017 as recommended by the Finance Committee, including debt and interest, and to fix the salaries of all elected officials, including, if appropriate, select board, town clerk, town collector, town treasurer, town assessors, town constables, board of health, elector under the Oliver Smith will, planning board, park and rec commission, and to provide a, reverse, a reserve fund. Do I have a motion? Second. I didn't hear a second. Thank you. Been moved and seconded. Um, the Finance Committee will speak to the budget. Chairman Kapaki. Good evening, everybody. Just to let you know, you're not having a deja vu moment. And I can assure you my tenure at this position will not be as long as it was the last go round. <laughs> I'd like to thank the moderator for appointing myself and the members of this committee. We would like also to thank uh, uh, Dave Nixon for his extraordinary efforts to help educate and expedite the budget process, especially for the new members of this committee, considering the mid-year appointments. I will be brief. I would like to begin as I began with the budget reviews. Given an annual inflation rate of approximately 1%, a consumer price index of less than a half a percent, and Social Security COLA locked at zero for the last two years, Please justify the facts of your budget. Our committee listened to all the departments and citizens and have tried to align our revenues with the fixed expenditures and requests. After hours of copious deliberation, the results will be forthcoming in the following budget. We understand the premise that we must keep our expenditures parallel with our revenue. Borrowing excessively or using stabilization account to balance the budget will lead to fiscal peril. We encourage our leaders, and especially our new leaders of the school, the DPW, the police, the fire, and the treasurer, to be creative and enthusiastically embrace the concept of fiscal efficiency and ex exercise their power to increase revenues where uh, legitimately possible. On to budget. Moderator, expense, $100. Select board, chair, $1,400. Members, $1,200 each for $4,800. Other salaries, $46,702. Expenses, $16,225 for a total of $69,127. Town Administrator, salary, $90,137. Expense, $2,600 for a total of $92,737. The Finance Committee, Chair, $200, members $150 each for $600, expenses $250 for a total of $1,050. That hasn't changed since 1992. Reserve fund, $50,000. Town accountant, sal salaries and expenses $91,652 to a total of $91,652. The assessors, the chair, $2,678, members at $2,100, $42 a piece for a total of $4,284. Other salaries, $64,359. Expenses, $20,672 for a total of $91,993. The treasurer, treasurer's salary is $58,293. Other salaries for $42,992. Expenses, $34,870 for a total of $100. $136,155. Mr. Moderator, I move the previous line items. Thank you. Any questions? Next up, Sue Rendon. Welcome. I'm going to start with the tax collector, the collector salary. Oh, I'm sorry. With the tax collector, the collector salary is $59,174. The other salaries are $37,655. The expenses are $12,264 for a total of $109,093. 
The town council is 36,380 for a total of 36,380. The town clerk is $57,183. Other salaries are 14,781. The expenses are 8,650 8, for a total of 80,614. The board of registers, the salaries are 8,920. The expenses are 8,500 for a total of $17,420. The conservation co um, commission expenses are $3,050 for a total of $3,050. The planning board, the salary chair is $600, the salary clerk is $500, the members at $400 each total $1,200, and their expenses are $10,480 for a total of $12,780. The Board of Appeals, the salaries are $1,135. Their expenses are $1,220 for a total of $2,355. The Long Range Plan, the expenses are $2,500 for a total of $2,500. And lastly, the insurance, the property insurance is $107,100 for a total of $107,100. Mr. Moderator, I move the previous line items. Ms. Valerie Hood. <laughs> Start with the Town Buildings Senior Center, $46,600. Town Hall, $72,325. North Hadley Hall, $10,000. Russell School, $1,750 for a total of $130,675. The police, salaries, $959,233. Expenses, $169,218 for a total of $1,128,451. Fire Department. Salaries, 237918 Expenses, 135000 for a total of 372918 Communication Center. Salaries, 244632 Expenses, 52500 for a total of $297,132. Ambulance. Expenses, $135,000. Building inspector, salaries, $89,080. Expenses, $6,029 for a total of $95,109. Gas inspector, salary, $3,341. Expense, $890 for a total of $4,231. Plumbing inspector, salary $5,826, expenses $670 for a total of $6,496. School department, salaries and expense, $6,672,091. Uh, Mr. Moderator, I move the previous line item. Thank you very much. Ms. Terry Yushko. Highway construction and maintenance, $462,919. That was highway construction. Maintenance is 296153 so a total of $759,072. Snow and ice, salaries, 68,573, expense 99,649, for a total of 168,222. Street lighting, lighting $21,840 for a total of 21,840. Highway building maintenance 61,500 for a total of 61,500. Cemetery salaries $5,505. Expenses, $12,830 for a total of $18,335. Board of Health, salary chair, 
1,850. Salary clerk, 1,650. Members, 1,450. Other salaries, 11,100. Expenses, 20,485. For a total of 36,535. Council on Aging, salaries, 75,451. Expenses, 4,860. For a total of $80,311. Veteran services, expenses 107,122. Mr. Moderator, I move the pre previous line items. Any questions? Finally, Ms. Amy Fighton. Uh, we have the Oliver Smith Will Elector. Stipend, $100. Public library, salaries, $129,001. Expenses, $74,891. For a total of $203,892. Park Commission, salary, chair, uh, $420. Members each receive $315. Uh, and that's $630. Other salaries. $53,861, expenses $5,665, total of $60,576. Historical Commission, expenses $1,250 for a total of $1,250. Long-term debt, principal $857,601, interest. $112,049 for a total of $969,500. Oh, sorry. $650. We have benefits. Retirement. Um, $929,000. $264,000, Work, workers' comp, $72,000, unemployment, $14,000, health insurance, $1,225,000, life insurance, $2,500, Medicare town share, a uh, Medicare town share is $136,000, OPEB is zero, accident insurance, $45,000. And that's a total of 2,423,764. Cable TV salaries, 44,139. Reserve fund, 20,000. Expenses, $4,578. For a total of $68,717. Wastewater division, this is the salaries. $293,375, reserve fund $10,000. Long-term debt and principal interest, zero. Other expenses, $551,177 uh, $551, for a total of $854,552. Water division, salaries, we have 352560 reserve fund $10,000, long-term debt, principal, and interest, $217,600, other expenses, $475,796, total of $1,055,966. With a total budget of $16,637,613. Mr. Moderator, I move the previous line items. Any questions? Hearing none. Oh. <clears throat> I want to know from the Finance Committee, how, do, how come they put all the health insurance on a town ticket instead of whether the school's a big portion of it? And I'm just looking for actual cost of every department. And why isn't it charged out to the schools and to every, every other department? The health insurance is bought as a group. It's cheaper that way. 
It still can would, be in a we, we, if, we, if you want the accounting to be broken out per department uh, and as an additional line item, you could do it that way. But we just group them all into one, just like workman's comp. We're not going to go ahead and break that out individually for each department. But you need to you need to explain to the taxpayers what it costs to run this town and each division of the town. I, you, I thought we you, just did. You know, you 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 group everything in one lump sum. All the benefits they should be separated, and that should be part of the department. That would give you the true account of what it cost us to run each department. Uh, you were at the hearings, at the uh, budget reviews. We went through each line item. One thing I'd like to just offer to that end is um, the town invested in um, some software last year called Biz, BizGov, I think. Um, we're also looking at a comparable package, and one of the goals of the select board over the coming year is to actually provide just that information that Mr. Michkowski is asking for. Um, it wouldn't be in the, done in the line item budget, but it is information that we think it's important for uh, the town's folks to know, to understand well, kind of what a fully loaded cost of providing particular services. So hopefully in the next year or so, we'll actually be able to make that easily accessible to you via the website. John Edwards, uh, Hawk Meadow Drive. I had a question about um, Department 171, the Conservation Commission. I just noticed there's no salaries there, and I just didn't know if that was correct. Is that in the expenses? There, there, is, there is no salary, right? Yeah. Mr. Pitt? I'm speaking in reference to uh, 919 account, the OPEB. Most people in here probably don't even know what OPEB is. OPEB is our public employee benefits. That is all of our retirement employees and our regular employees' health insurance budgets uh, that we're obligated to pay for the rest of their retirement. What people don't know, the whole country has an unfunded liability of $30 billion. Our unfunded liability is about $7 million. It's starting to catch up to this. I, I commend our town treasurer, uh, Linda Sanderson. She argued to get this on here and start paying that down. She wanted to try for a lot more money, but she was very happy to get something. And if we don't continue to attack and pay that down, we're at the forefront of being su beginning to suffer consequences from uh, S&P on our borrowing. If we don't pay it down, they're already talking about increasing people's rates. Fortunately, the town of Hadley has a AAA account. But anytime they start reducing from the AAA, trickling it down, that means our borrowing cases increase. We're talking about articles today about going out to borrow, and without continuing to pay this down, we're going to pay exorbitant funds in the future to borrow any money that we request. Thank you. Chet Abel, um, the police, it's over a million dollars. <clears throat> and how much of that would one guess is due to the malls and having to send officers out there on a frequent basis? Um, and can that be somehow collected? Well, I don't have the exact number off the top of my head, but the, the malls pay their fair share of tax in this here town. Um, obviously, Obviously, they keep our department busy, um, some days more than others. And being a veteran of the select board for 12 years and have gone through this process many a times, I think there's one thing that we have to remember that's unique about Hadley that 
really there's no place like it in the Commonwealth. We are a small town, roughly 5,000 some odd residents. But we are not a small town from nine to five or even nine to nine when you're talking about 40,000 cars just on Route 9 alone. So when you look at the police budget and you say, yeah, it's a million dollars, it doesn't take long when you have a full-time police force with the amount of work that they have to do to, to get a budget of that point. I appreciate that. And this isn't a reflection. But we don't we department. don't we don't have actual man hours that are tracked to say the mall or Home Depot or anything like that. We don't have that information. We have a we have a call list and I'm sure if you asked the chief he'd be able to furnish that that data to you. And then the other question is ambulance. Is that what we pay to have um, Amherst? That's yes, that's a contracted price. And I see Paulette here, so I believe she's going to talk about the Conservation Commission. Paulette Kosteba, 40 Knightley Road. I'm the chair of the Conservation Commission. The reason the Conservation Commission does not have salaries, one, none of the commissioners get paid for the work that they do, and our staff person is paid out of the wetland fees, our portion of the wetland fees that the commission collects for each filing. So none of the salary that for our uh, conservation agent comes out of town funding. It's all fee generated. Thank you for that clarification. Are there any other questions? Yeah, Deborah Levinson, 14 Holly. I just wonder if you could explain or let us know, I assume these are additional positions for the largest items that are increasing, the police salaries, the school department salaries, and then another large item is the long-term debt. Could someone just speak to what, what those additional positions are and what um, the long-term debt increase is? Looking at my sheet here. <laughs> uh, David, would you like to talk about that real quick? So the long-term debt is uh, for uh, borrowing that was approved by town, uh, previous uh, town meetings. Uh, for projects that we've uh, that we've accomplished, and for uh, for uh, capital items that we have purchased, so we had a number of upgrades over at the highway department, having to do with trucks, uh, having to do with other heavy equipment. Uh, we so all of this is uh, uh, being borrowed, and we're we now have done. You know, it's too bad, but we have to actually pay the money back. So th this is voter approved borrowing that. We're now uh, doing the debt service for. Uh, for the police department, uh, I think there's only one new position at this point. Um, this is, uh, the, the rest of it is by the contract negotiations that, you've, that were uh, put in place. Uh, and I'm afraid I wasn't tracking all the questions you had. School department positions. Uh, I'll let the school superintendent address the school budget. I didn't quite catch what you said about the police position, though, David. Police. It's about eighty. Looks like it's about eighty thousand above what we talked about earlier. That's that's correct. This is next year's budget, so the increase was eighty thousand dollars. Is that a new position? Is the question? Are the, uh, there is uh, one new position, Chief? Is that correct? Okay, so we're still working on that one. Can you come to the, the, the microphone, please? Uh, what we have requested, uh, I was asked to present two different budgets. One of them is a uh, level service budget, which is essentially what we can move forward with in FY17, and then an expanded service budget. Uh, my request was for three total original positions. Uh, taking into account that we are going to use a large sum of our level service budget to cover those costs. Uh, we're going to be removing uh, approximately $60,000 from our part time line and using that to hire new full time positions in an effort to not only get more officers on the street but also reduce the overtime costs that we've been struggling with over the last several years. Um, I don't know how much they want me to go into that, but uh, essentially we are still speaking with the select board to decide how many officers, if the budget passes, 
we will hire now and how many possibly in the future at fall town meeting. But uh, uh, my request was for three so that we could add an additional person on each shift, um, essentially so that when one person takes a day off, we do not have to now backfill that with overtime any longer. I think it bears uh, explaining that um, we've made several changes to contracts, the police officers' contracts, that's part-time and full-time. Um, there are many moving parts to this plan. It is not going to happen overnight. Uh, however, just as a side note, with the changes in policy that we've made since I took over, as well as working hand-in-hand uh, -hand with the union, the finance committee, and the, the unions, the finance committee, and the select board, uh, at this time last year, we were I believe $47,000 in the hole in our overtime line. Uh, I'm very proud to say that we are still in the black right now. Um, so we are approximately fifty dollars to $60,000 ahead of where we were last year and I'm hoping, knock on wood, um, we're going to struggle for the last six weeks of this budget, but this may be the first time in probably the last five years that uh, we may not have to come back at fall town meeting and ask for a uh, extra money to balance our budget. Thank you, Chief. <laughs> Superintendent. Thank you, Annie McKenzie, Superintendent of Schools. Thank you for your question. No, as of our FY16, F FY16 positions, we aren't increasing any of our positions in FY17. The increases that you see in the school department budget can be attributed primarily to the following. We estimate, well we know, we have an increase in tuitions for out of district placements for students who are required to be in out of district placements and we have a legal obligation, the town has a fiscal obligation to fund those placements. We also have an increase in tuitions for Smith Vocational the increase in out-of-district placements for students requiring those, we estimate to be $201,497. The increase in Smith vocational tuitions based on an increase in students attending Smith, an increase of roughly $61,056. We have budgeted for additional and updated science curriculum materials, uh, and that increase um, was roughly $15,000, and that's because there have been changes to state stand standards in science. And we have mandated increases based on the needs of students uh, requiring some special education services in contracted services. So no, that was not an increase in positions, but rather costs that um, we, we cannot say we're not going to pay. Any, any other questions? As we were answering those questions, you may have noticed uh, I bent over and talked to the town administrator. Um, we have a correction in the budget. If you go to Department 440, Wastewater Division, under long-term debt, principal, and interest, you will see that there is a zero there. I asked the question and through double checking, that number should be $136,127, which brings the total for that department to 990,679. It also increases the total budget to $16,773,740. Million, $16 million and besides that change, we have to make a change to the original motion of the second line item to appropriate from sewer receipts. That new number will be $1,149,020. So I just want to bring that to everybody's attention and I will move it now and look for a second. Yeah. Is that going to change the bottom line on the last page? No, it will not because we pay for sewer debt and interest out of sewer receipts. So that will not, 
that will not affect that shortfall budget deficit number of $140,000, 719. Mr. Mitch? Who is responsible for overlooking this? This to me is kind of ridiculous. You wait till town meeting, you got the finance committee, you got the board of selectmen, you got a town administrator. And a town, what else, what else town it a accountant, manager? <laughs> town treasurer. Luckily we have a moderator, Mr. Mitch. <laughs> I'd like to thank you for catching that. Well, I would ha I'd hate to not be able to pay it because we don't vote on it here tonight. That would not be good. So is there any other questions about the budget? Seeing none, all in favor, please signify with your gray card. Opposed? Abstaining? The budget passes unanimously. Thank you. On to Article 10. Oh, that's right. 11. The motion reads, motion number one.